My name is Patrick Lohner, and I'll be your instructor on this course. We're going to start with a little bit about my background. I've been in the uh, IT industry, actually, for about 18 years, uh, working as a network administrator and a Microsoft certified trainer. And of course, along the way, I've uh, uh, done my fair share of applications training as well, and I've also used the Office programs personally, every version, uh, since I think Office 97. Uh, was the first version that I uh, was involved with. I heavily use, uh, of course, Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, uh, you know, all of those. Very well versed in the differences, the older versions to the new, the compatibility issues from an IT perspective, but also just using them from an application perspective. So I'm excited to be able to go through these courses and share this information with you and get you uh, ready to use the latest version of Microsoft Office. But in this first topic, we're just going to look at the, the layout because before you can effectively use Excel to store and manage data, you have to become familiar with the environment. You have to be able to identify and locate the various components in the user interface, the commands, the options. Only in doing so will we be able to quickly and efficiently utilize this program. Let's start with just an introduction to Excel. What is it? Well, it's an application, of course, that is a part of the Office 2016 suite. It is an electronic spreadsheet program. It allows you to store data. It allows you to present that data in various ways, manipulate it, analyze it. Uh, its functionality includes the ability to have you work with and analyze just massive amounts of data. And, and often Excel is used to give you sort of actionable intelligence on the organization. How are we going to make business and organizational decisions? Well, we're going to do that with the Excel program and with all the data that it contains. So not only can we store data, but Excel can help us to make educated decisions based on that data. Now, Excel being a part of Office 2016 is included in the Office 365 subscriptions. The vast majority of those subscriptions, there are a few that don't include the Office apps, but most of them do. And so if your organization uses Office 365, then you have the ability to install Excel along with the other Office programs on up to five PCs. In addition to that, you can also get access to Excel Online. You can see that in the tiles, green tile in the middle of the page under Collaborate with Office Online. This is an online web browser version of Excel. It will not provide all of the capabilities of the desktop application, but it will provide many capabilities. Uh, you certainly can view existing worksheets and workbooks. You can create additional ones. You'll just be a little bit limited in some of the formatting options. So not really meant to be somebody's primary application, like they're going to use this every day. No, if you're an information worker, then you have the desktop version of Excel. But the point of this is to give you quick access to Excel spreadsheets and whatnot, regardless of where you are, because it's supported on a, a large number of browsers. So let's get into some of the terminology that we're frequently using in Excel. Okay, so the first term is going to be a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet is simply a, a paper, or in this case an electronic document, that's arranged in a, in a tabular form. So it's used to store data, but then we can also manipulate data like sorting it. We can analyze data, building charts based off of that data to show the, you know, the percentage of our inventory that's a particular product or the, partic the percentage of our gross sales that has to do with a certain category of products, that kind of thing. Okay, that's just, that's a spreadsheet in general. A worksheet is an electronic spreadsheet that's used for entering data into Excel. Okay, so spreadsheet is more of the generic term. Worksheet is the term that we used in Excel. So along the bottom of the screen there, you can see that you have multiple sheets 
Each individual sheet would be a worksheet, and then collectively you have a workbook. A workbook is an Excel file that is a container to store related Excel worksheets. And it's just sort of the analogy where you know, all the sheets are individual pages, and the workbook is the binding that holds all the pages together, etc. Okay, the default number of worksheets in a workbook that you create is one but you can create additional worksheets. They do not have to be named sheet one, two, and three. You can name them whatever, whatever is logical. You know, but usually the reason that we're putting them all together in a workbook is because they have some relationship to one another. The Excel worksheet is arranged in a tabular format. That means it consists of a series of rows and columns. And each intersect is a cell, a single container that you can use to input and store data. So each individual rectangle you see on the worksheet is referred to as an Excel cell. Okay? A range is a group of cells that contain related data. So a range can you know, consist of an entire column or an entire row. You know, they all have related data. So in this case, you have employee names and regions, and then quarter one, two, three, and four, that would be a range of cells. It, they all include the same kind of information. We're assuming, you know, sales revenue from a particular employee. So cells are the individual units. Ranges are ranges of cells that relate to one another. You may come across the term region as well in reference to, uh, to worksheet cells region is simply a group of contiguous populated cells okay it's different from a range because a range the data is related to one another and uh, region region the data may not be related to one another it's just simply that there is data in all of these cells so we identify cells in excel using what's called a cell reference we identify ranges using what's called a range reference just think of the cell reference as the name of the cell. So it's just used to differentiate that between other cells in the worksheet. It consists of a letter and a number. Okay, the letter is the column header, and the number is the row header. All right, so it's wherever the cell intersects. So if we're in column B and row 4, then the cell is called B4 or B6, we see identified uh, there. And so, you know, that's typically... Oh, that is the way that we will talk about cells. We'll say go to cell A1 or go to cell you know, F5. Then you're just going to, whether you go to the row or the column, it's up to you, but you're, you're looking for that particular intersect. Then we use range references to identify ranges of data. The range reference consists of two cell references, and then they are separated by a colon, so D2, F6. Okay, and it's identifying, if you notice, the top leftmost cell and then the bottom rightmost cell in the range. So individual cells, just column and row number. Ranges, top leftmost cell and bottom rightmost cell identify that range of data. The Excel user interface has all of the different uh, workspaces and commands that you're going to use to create and work with uh, workbooks and worksheets. The general areas across the top include the, uh, the Quick Access Toolbar. Quick Access Toolbar has access to the most frequently used commands, so save is always there, undo, redo, and you can add additional ones as well. Uh, then you have the title bar. The title bar will list the name of your workbook. It's just called Book 1 by default until you save it, and then it'll be called by whatever name you give it. Beneath that, you have a ribbon. Previous versions of Office, now, now we have to go back a few versions, but long ago they used menus and toolbars, and that, that's gone away uh, at this point. You, most of you are probably familiar with the ribbon because I believe it was originally introduced in Office 2007. So now we're kind of a, a far removed from the, the old days of the toolbars, but the ribbons actually function a lot like a, a, a menu and submenus, with the exception of you don't have to go hunting around in the submenus. Okay, so you hit each of the individual tabs, like the Home tab, the Insert tab, the Page Layout, and then you have separate command groups uh, within those tabs. And so as you select a tab, you see on the ribbon all of the 
different options uh, that you would have for that particular tab. Okay. Uh, the formula bar is going to display the contents of whatever cell you currently have selected in the worksheet. The name box displays the cell reference, or if you have multiple cells selected, it would list a range. So right now in our graphic, it says A1 because the A1 cell has the green line around it uh, or green border. A status bar down at the bottom, uh, view and zoom controls on the, uh, the bottom right that's primarily for magnification uh, level uh, that you have. Now those are the outer elements. There are also inner elements. So the inner elements in the Excel UI include the column headers. The column headers are, you know, that first group of cells. So they identify each separate column with a unique letter or letter combination. Actually, that would be what's above there, A, B, C, D, E, F. The row headers are to the left, and they identify the, the number. So it makes it pretty easy to identify the individual cell. But you do have a select all button there right to the left of the A and above the 1. It selects all cells in the worksheet. You have scroll bars on the right and the bottom, depending on the size of the window that will help you navigate uh, in the sheets. And then you have worksheet tabs. The worksheet tabs will allow you to jump between different worksheets in the workbook. You also have a new sheet uh, button, the plus sign there, that will allow you to quickly create an additional sheet. On the top right-hand side of the Excel window, you have commands that will be used to manipulate the window. This is just like any other application. So we have the Ribbon Display Options button, which that one's a little different. It changes how uh, the ribbon is displayed in the UI. You have the you have three options. You have Auto Hide, which just hides it entirely until you select the top of Excel. You have the Show Tabs, which just shows you the individual tabs like Home, Insert. And then you have the Show Tabs and Commands, which is the default. And that means the whole ribbon is on the screen the, the whole time. Okay, the other three are Minimize, Maximize, and Close. And it's just helping you to move and manipulate the window in comparison with all the other things that you're viewing on your screen. Minimize minimizes it to the taskbar. Uh, maximize it. Maximize takes up the full screen. However, if you then hit it again, it's restored down to its original size and then close. Uh, you can also use your mouse and left click on the corners of the window. Left click hold and then drag and that will increase or decrease the size of the window. When you select the file tab on the ribbon and go to options, you are actually going into what is called the backstage view. Okay, On the left side, you have a column of commands that's showing you, you know, just different commands and tabs that will allow you to save or save as or print or share or publish or do any number of things. And if you click on the options, that will take you into the main Excel options that you have. The right pane is individual commands related to a particular tab. And so, and sometimes this is just metadata, but other times it's managing the workbook. It's how you're going to save it. It's the print previews and exporting information so it's visible in other programs. You know, all of, all of those uh, kinds of things. So if you're hunting for the options, just click file and the really 100% of the options that you're going to need are uh, found in that backstage view. Now this is something that is there in other office programs, but it seems a little bit more explicit and important with Excel. Excel has a number of options for doing the same task and that that's not different, but the mouse icons will determine exactly what it is you're doing. And that's kind of what we mean that is unique, at least somewhat to Excel. And this is to the extent that the cursor is going to change based on the context or location that you're at. So there's a couple things we need to say first. I mean, and that's, you know, if you want to select a particular cell, you just click on that cell. If you want to select a range, then you click and drag the entire range, or you can click on entire columns, entire rows, you know, those kinds of things. But again, depending on what the icon looks like, that can kind of help you determine exactly what you're about to do. So the arrow there, place on ribbon tabs or commands, backstage tabs or commands, the quick access toolbar, 
sheets, tabs, view and zoom controls, that's just your select. You're selecting an element. You're trying to perform the associated action. We're typically doing that within the ribbon itself. The crosshairs there, it placed at the edge of a cell or range of cells, and then you can drag that cell or range to move the data inside to another cell or range. You place your mouse over a cell in the worksheet. You get the plus sign there. That will help you select an individual cell or drag for a range. If you place between the worksheet column headers, you get the, the vertical bar with horizontal arrows. That allows you to left-click and drag, and it will resize. Alternatively, you can double-click, and it'll auto-fit to the largest column. Okay, that's so that nothing is truncated. And the same thing works with the rows. Inside an active cell or inside the formula bar, if you, you get your little eye sort of cursor, then that just means you're going to be able to, uh, to select the text, and you're going to be able to modify that text. And then if you go to the bottom right corner of a cell or range of cells and drag vertically or horizontally, you are copying uh, data with the, uh, with the cross there. Uh, alternatively to copying, you can be auto-filling in adjacent cells. So if I've already ordered it, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I get that range, Excel picks up on the range, and I can drag and keep going, and it'll 5, 6, 7, 8, and, and keep, it'll auto-fill based on the data inside those cells. When you select a, a cell in Excel, it becomes the active cell, and it's only into the active cell that you can actually enter data. And the active cell is always going to dis be displayed with that solid green border around it. Uh, if you have a range of cells, then only one cell within the range is going to be the active cell, and that's the one that's actually displayed without any sort of shaded background. You can use tab and enter keys to navigate among cells. Tab will go to the next cell to the right. Enter will generally go down a line, but sometimes that kind of depends on where you last were. Those are the options. You don't have to mouse between each one. Uh, we could just use keyboard shortcuts, okay? So name box, again, is column and row heading. Formula bars where we enter the actual data. And then the data being entered is, you know, can also be entered down below, I suppose. If you want to do a range of cells, you can use the shift key on the keyboard first and last by holding shift, or you can do control. Control will give you non-contiguous groups of cells. Come on.